Hey everybody. Hey, good morning, Colonial. Uh, this is Pastor Mark with your daily devotional for today. Today is the 26th of January, and I appreciate you all tuning in for this daily devotional today. We've been going through the Proverbs. As you know, we've been taking it one proverb per day, so we are now on uh, day 26, and so we'll be I'll be teaching from Proverbs 26, specifically verses 13 through 16. So if you have your Bibles handy, open them up to Proverbs 26, verses 13 through 16 today. It's kind of a fun fun one today, so I, I uh, am excited to be able to teach from the Word of God. Chris, Meredith, thanks for tuning in today, and I'm going to wait a couple seconds for a couple more people to log on here. Uh, as you see, I'm wearing my Chief's hat. Uh, this one says, Potter Strong, my sister-in-law surprised me and my brothers and my dad with these hats on our way to the Chiefs game on Sunday. Thanks for uh, the compliment, Rosie. And uh, it's got my initials on the back, uh, so I know which one's mine. And it was a, a, a great game. I know that a bunch of you watched the Chiefs game taking down the Buffalo Bills. Uh, there were quite a few Bills fans in attendance um, actually on Sunday. And I, I lost, I started to lose my voice. So yesterday my voice was recovering all day from yelling and screaming and cheering through my mask. Uh, but it was a great game to go to. Uh, Pastor Greg yesterday was commenting on how cold it was. That's just spoken like a true Texan because it wasn't that cold. We just layered up and made it happen and cheered loud and the Chiefs came down with the win. So that was exciting. So Laura, Theo, Bonnie, uh, good morning. Stronger together. Amen and praise God. So I'm also trying to start to grow out my facial hair here a little bit. Uh, I haven't been able to grow facial hair in like five months, <laughs> so <coughs> thought I'd uh, I'd let it grow for a couple couple weeks here. See if I can get a, a beard growing or going or however you say that. Uh, so let me start in. It's Proverbs 26 today, chapters 13 through 16. If you have your Bible, open up to that, and this is what it says. The sluggard says, there is a lion in the road. There's a lion in the streets. As a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard in his bed. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. Uh, that's verses 13 through 16 in the ESV translation. And it's kind of an interesting passage talking about laziness today. And, uh, you know, of course, the Solomon, the writer of Proverbs, is speaking primarily to young men who probably struggle with laziness. I know many young men uh, back when I was a youth leader and back when I was a youth, we struggled with laziness at times. So um, good morning, Pam. Good morning, Jeremy and others. Thanks for tuning in. We're in Proverbs 26, verses 13. Through 16, I'm going to break it down verse by verse here briefly, just share a, a, maybe an insight or two from each verse. Verse 13 again says, The sluggard says, There is a lion in the road. There is a lion in the streets. And the lion, this represents something big and scary, that big scary thing on the horizon that causes us to make excuses for being lazy. It can be something that's real or something that's perceived, something that we make up in our own mind. Anything that demotivates us from carrying out the Missio Dei, the mission of God, due to fear. So what's your lion in the road? That's a good question for us to ask today. What's that big, scary thing that you see in front of you that's preventing you from spending time with God, or serving God, or sharing God's truth? What's your lion in the road? It could be fear of rejection. It could be insecurity. It could be social anxiety or inadequacy. It could be something as simple as busyness or a lie from the enemy. It could be cancer. It could be COVID. The question is, what is preventing you from spending time with God or serving God or sharing God's truth today? In other words, what is the root of our laziness? What's your lion? That's verse 13. The verse continues on in verse 14. It says, As a door turns on its hinges, 
So does a sluggard on his bed. Just like hinges on the door, laziness causes us to toss and turn back and forth in our bed, but not get out of bed, right? The door is stuck to its hinges, just like a sluggard is stuck to his or her bed. It continues on in verse 15. It says, The sluggard buries his hand in the dish and it wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. Wow, that's an interesting statement, isn't it? A lazy person must eat in order to survive, but he or she is too lazy to get the food back from the bowl into his or her mouth. He or she would rather stay in bed and starve than put in the work necessary to nourish his body and his soul. I'm going to say that again. He or she, the, the sluggard, that the one who is lazy, would rather stay in bed and starve than put in the work necessary to nourish his body and his soul. PJ, uh, thanks for joining us today. We're in Proverbs chapter 26 for the 26th day of the month. And it continues on here in verse 16. It says, The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. That's the ESV translation. I'm also going to read the, the uh, NLT translation. It says, Lazy people consider themselves smarter than seven wise counselors. Lazy people consider themselves smarter than seven wise counselors. Now, this is kind of counterintuitive, I think. Uh, What we learn in this verse is that laziness affects our brains and it affects our judgment and our self-awareness, doesn't it? Ironically, lazy people are more prone to think of themselves more highly than they ought. I know that you all have heard the verse in Romans 12, 3, when Paul says, "For the by the grace given to me, I say to everyone that you ought not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, Romans 12, 3. So how could lazy people think of themselves more highly than they ought? How, how can lazy people think of themselves smarter than seven wise men? Well, it's because physical laziness also leads to intellectual and spiritual laziness as well. Last week, I discussed the acronym CHAT, C-H-A-T, <clears throat> which is a way to gauge one's readiness for discipleship. And, you know, the, the C is committed, and the H is hungry, and the A is available, and the T is what I want to focus on today. The T is teachable. Are you teachable? Uh, if you're lazy or if you're a sluggard, then you aren't being teachable because you're not willing to receive or accept godly counsel from others. Have you ever heard the phrase armchair quarterback? You know, it's football season, so I think of a lot of football analogies. And when fans critique the players and coaches of a football team from the comfort of their own lazy boy recliner while eating popcorn and drinking beer, this is the definition of an armchair quarterback. And we all claim to be experts, you know, on this or that. We all claim to be football experts when we're watching it on TV in the comfort of our own bed or from our own lazy boy. But the truth is we have no business critiquing or claiming to be an expert in something that we are not in shape enough to participate in. And this is uh, the equivalent, chapter 26, verse 16 of Proverbs is the equivalent of armchair quarterbacking with regard to godly counsel. Meanwhile, we are spiritually lazy. We reject godly coaching because we think we know it all already while we are still stuck in bed with the TV on eating popcorn and our pajamas. So uh, again, this verse is talking about sluggard and laziness, but what's the remedy? Where's the hope? (laughs) What's the remedy for laziness? What's the solution to the problem of laziness? In other words, how does one overcome laziness? Well, I want to turn us to a different verse. It's from Titus chapter 2, verse 14. It says this. It says, Christ gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, or you could insert laziness in there, and to purify himself to a people for his own possession who are, and this is the key, who are zealous for good works. Titus 2, 14. So here's the thing, is that Christ was killed 
in order to kill our sin and forgive us from our sins, including the sin of laziness. So in one sense, we cannot overcome laziness on our own. We need help. We need God to intervene. <clears throat> and God has intervened through Christ. And this is one of the reasons, laziness, that Christ had to die. <clears throat> and so the result, sorry, I had a little uh, thing in my throat. I'm still recovering from the Chiefs game. Uh, as a result of Christ's death, is a purified people, as the verse says, who are zealous for good works, right? If, if Christ is living in you, if the Spirit of God indwells you, then that is all the motivation that you and I need to be able to be zealous for good works, godly works. The opposite of laziness is being zealous for Christ. Amen and praise God. Hey, let me pray for us here as we conclude. And uh, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this Verse, this timely message from the Proverbs chapter 26. God, we pray and thank you for Christ who has defeated laziness among other sins so that we can now be motivated to go and do good works, the good works that you have in store for us to do, God. I pray that we'd follow the Spirit's leading in that. And again, thank you for all of these people who are listening to this call and are going to listen later on. God, I pray that you would give us each motivation that we need to be able to share the gospel and to do your good works of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we play. pray. <laughs> Amen. Not play. Uh, that's what the Chiefs will be doing two weeks from now in the Super Bowl. So, hey, thanks for joining me today, guys. I just had another radiation treatment this morning. That's number nine for me. I've got uh, 20, no, 19 left, I believe. So, all that being said, appreciate your continual prayers and... Uh, I look forward to wearing this Chiefs hat in two weeks from now as they cheer on Tampa in the Super Bowl. Uh, go Chiefs, and God bless you all. Take care.